In your book, like right in the introduction, you say, um, you may not be aware that the number one reason for data breaches is insecure software. So that's obviously a huge problem, but it sounds like there's not enough people who are qualified for this. Is that right? Yeah. So that quote is from the Verizon Breach Report. I've been reading it since 2015, but the years before that, we also unfortunately were number one, which sucks. I'd rather us not be on that yeah. list at all. I feel part of the reason for data breaches is that there's not enough application security folks to fill every role. There's lots of open job postings right now, and all of them want us to have 10 plus years experience, which I'm only on year nine of my security, like I'm on year 25 of my tech journey, but only year nine. So I'm like, if I don't qualify, like who qualifies for this job, buddy? It's ridiculous, yeah. But on top of that, I think one of the biggest reasons is that basically we're just not teaching basic security hygiene to any new software developers. So they go to university, they go to college, they go to a boot camp, and the first lesson you always learn is called hello world, where you, you just code out yep. hello world. But I call it hello insecure world because they are literally teaching you the recipe for cross-site <laughs> scripting. The first thing you learn to do is put hello world on the screen. The second thing you learn to do is ask their name, and then they put their name in, and then you reflect it onto the screen. There's no input validation. We don't talk about output encoding. And then that is literally the perfect recipe for reflected cross-site scripting. And so it's very frustrating that after all this time, it's still being taught how to do it insecurely from the very first day. And so none of these boot camps usually cover anything to do with security. And most university and colleges, if they do teach something which is rare, it's usually either identity and access management, which is important. That is one of the many lessons I would want, or two, web app hacking. And so they'll teach you maybe how to hack the OWASP top 10 or some of the OWASP top 10. And they're, they're like, there, that's your security. I'm like, no, that is, no, that is like, you have scraped the tiny part of the surface. Ah! And so when I started We Hack Purple, I spent a lot of time trying to work with different universities and getting them to take my book as a textbook and I, I was like, can I make like some sort of electronic version of a, a course for you? And all of them, first of all, they said, you don't have a PhD and therefore we'll only pay you as yep. an adjunct professor. Yeah. So I have been offered 4,000 Canadian dollars, which is less than 3,000 American dollars to work 10 hours a week for four months and grade all the assignments and grade all the exams. I'm like, no. I could work at Walmart as a greeter and make more money. And they want to own my content after. I'm like, this is a sad, sad joke. And they're like, sorry, I guess we can't hire you. I'm like, you're a billion dollar organization. You can hire me. You just don't value what I bring to the table and you don't care that you are literally graduating thousands of software engineers and developers where you've taught them incorrectly how to make software. And it really bothers me. So I, I was hoping that some of them, and so my book is taught at a handful of universities by an adjunct professor who is essentially volunteering. And then I've guest appeared at many wow. universities but not having a PhD, I don't even have a degree, I have a diploma, apparently that is sacrilege. And I'm just like, guys, <laughs> guys, get with the program. The world's changed, I mean, it, I can't believe it. Could you imagine, just imagine for a second, oh yeah, we're a trade school and we teach people how to do electricity, but we don't bother to teach them any safety and so then houses just burn down all the time and people die. Sorry about that, it's expensive for us to change the curriculum and exert effort. Can we have your money please? because that's what they're doing, right? But the trades would never get away with that. And they're significantly more regulated than software development and especially cybersecurity. And so I feel like we need to work towards having the government more involved. There has to be like a bare minimum of security that you're gonna teach if you're gonna teach people to code, et cetera. But we're way too far away from that. Um, but my hopes with just me constantly sharing things for free or almost free, that things will move forward and things will get better. So sometimes, um, so I did some book signings at RSA in San Francisco two weeks ago. People came up to me and they said, you know, I am a university professor and I'm gonna teach some of this. I'm like, please go and totally plagiarize my courses <laughs> and like add whatever lessons you think are good to your courses so that we can get this message out there and get people writing more secure code. So there are people like essentially volunteering at these multi-million, sometimes billion dollar organizations to try to correct this problem, but it literally compounds every year because they keep making new devs. They have not been tying security. It feels almost unfair.